So again there everybody, Dan Calloway here, coming to you from Linux, uh, Unix Tech Channel, and uh, today I want to talk about the Pi VPN. I've got this up and running now on my uh, Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus, uh, which I have uh, done a couple of videos on previously. So if you've watched those, if you haven't watched them, go back and look at those. And If you have watched them, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I'm really loving the Pi because um, I've, I've set up several things. Pi VPN is one of them. This is what I want to talk about today. Um, this is the website for setting up Pi VPN. It's called www.pivpn.io. And it's the Pi VPN project here, uh, which is a low cost, high security uh, application that runs on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've got it running now uh, with separate accounts for my iPhone, my iPad, my Linux, uh, Arch Linux desktop or laptop rather, and my Windows 10 Pro main PC tower. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm connecting to it almost immediately when I hit the connection, uh, and it's doing its job. It's 2048-bit RSA encryption um, and stays rock solid connected until I either drop the Wi-Fi leave the area of the Wi-Fi or shut down the uh, VPN uh, intentionally. In order to, uh, you, you, well, you need to go up on this website and read about uh, this. If you have a Raspberry Pi, visit this website. I'll put the link down in the bottom there of uh, the video. Um, take a look at it and uh, install it, and I think you'll be very happy with it. I was paying uh, 7 euros, which is equivalent to about 8 50 or more in US dollars per month uh, for Air VPN, which is out of the UK. Now, it's a great VPN, don't get me wrong. Does things that the Pi VPN doesn't, like hide your IP. Um, and it can make you look like you're in another country when you're not. Uh, I don't really need that. All I need is to have a tunnel of secure traffic uh, going from my device, my mobile device, out to the internet and back. Um, and it does. It is reachable outside the uh, the land. I can go out, you know, to an internet cafe, airport, library, connect to it on the device as well, uh, because I've opened up the router with a port forwarding rule to get back to the Pi at the IP address of the Pi to actually connect to my Pi VPN Open VPN service. It is Open VPN. There is one command that you need to run uh, once you get into your Pi, which is running Raspbian OS for my in my case, which is a, a variation of uh, Debian Linux. Uh, you may have something else installed. You may have Raspbian uh, Straight or, or something else installed. But um, here's the command. It's one command that you run, and it does everything for you. Pops up some screens. Um, you know, you need to ask questions um, or answer rather questions that they've asked uh, to show you a, an appearance of what the, some of the questions are that they're asking you. Is they're going to ask you what is the Pi VPN interface? It's ETH0 in my case, um, 127.0.0.1 is the IPv4 DNS. The IP address of my Pi is 192.168.1.95, uh, and then the gateway is 192.168.1.1, which is by router. All of these are pop-ups, by the way. You don't have to fill anything out. Uh, what you're looking at here is a um, link to a file that's under Etsy uh, Pi VPN uh, that I am showing you here. Uh, the protocol that you use for your Pi is UDP. Do not use TCP. You can use TCP, but it's going to slow it down. You don't need TCP for, for VPN. All you need is UDP, which is user datagram protocol. You don't need the transmission control protocol, internet protocol. The port here that I selected was the default port 1194. Uh, it is uh, recommended that you change that port number for security, and later on I may do that. For now, I just left it at 1194. I encrypted at 2048. You have three options that you can go for here. You can go for uh, 1024, 2048, or 4096. Now, 1024 takes a couple of minutes to uh, generate the RSA encryption key that you'll need for the certificate for the PI, for the PI VPN, for the VPN server. Um, 
if you run 2048, and I've got a internal solid state drive, 2048 took a while to generate. It took over 30 minutes to generate this key. If you want to generate a 4096 key to be absolutely sure that you're protected, go for it, but expect to take several hours to generate that key, even with an extremely fast machine, which I have. Um, here are some of the other questions that are asked, like landlocal.asyscom.com is the public uh, DNS that I'm using for the dynamic DNS service. Um, so that my IP address on the WAN side for the internet that's uh, supplied by my ISP, if that gets changed, then uh, the Pi VPN is going to follow it. The router is going to follow it, actually, and then it will let the Pi know uh, that it has changed, and then uh, I don't lose VPN that way. Uh, here's the DNS for DNS1 and DNS2. These are two Google DNSs. Uh, I elected to use the Google DNS here in this case. And then um, here's the file that I was referring to. It's Etsy Pi VPN out on Raspbian 3B Plus, which is the host name of my Pi. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead uh, and um, show you how I uh, set up the Pi. And uh, well, I'm not going to go into the actual setup, ra rather, but I'm going to show you how I access it. I've got MOBA Xterm set up in Windows 10. I'm on the Windows 10 Pro platform, uh, version 1903, by the way. Very good. Uh, if you haven't upgraded yet, that yet, go ahead and do that. Uh, I've got a session here for getting in, so it's 192.168.195. I'm going to click on it. It gets me into an SSH session. Automatically logs me in SSH. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, SU to get in as super user in the password and here I am so the um, location of where Pi is installed, well where the configuration is installed rather is uh, Etsy uh, Pi VPN and if I do an LS LH for a long listing here uh, you can see some of the things that are available within here uh, detection of the platform, install the protocol or port rather, the protocol of the user UFW, the Pi VPN interface, and then the setvars.clnf file. Now, what I did was I created a separate user account. By default, your first user account in your Pi VPN is the user Pi, which is the default user of the Pi itself. Um, but you'll probably want to go ahead and set up separate accounts for each device you have, and that's what I've done. I've set up a user for my iPhone, for my iPad, for my Windows 10 platform, and for my Arch Linux laptop. And to do that, I'm going to show you, uh, I'll just set up one for a generic device. I'll delete it later. To do that, all you need to do is do uh, Pi VPN add, and it asks you, enter the name of the client. And this is a client that you have on your network that you want to uh, set up an account for. So I'm just going to say uh, node 1. Okay, and then it's going to, how many days uh, should the certificate last? You can change this, but by default it's 1080. I'm going to leave it at that. And then enter the password for the client. I'm just going to enter the word password. Don't do that on yours. Verify it. Okay, generates the key. Creating that RSA private key for node 1. And then now if I go out to, uh, let's see, Go ahead and do a listing on that. I think um, under CD Home Pi, which is my home directory on the Pi, uh, there should be a folder. Yeah, there should be a folder here or a directory called OVPNS, which are the Open VPN uh, accounts. Okay, that I, and one of them I just created, and so I'm going to CD into OVPNS and then run a long listing of that directory and you can see here's the node1.ovpn file that it generated All right, and if we take a look at that this is what it looks like Okay. Um, actually let's see here uh, yeah this is every bit of it right here um, so there's a lot of information here now do you have to cut and paste or copy and paste this into anything? No. What you do is you go up on your device, 
the various ways to copy that uh, OVP, OVPN file to your device. But let's assume that I'm going to set this up on a, an iPhone 7. Okay. What I, what I can do, I've got a personal cloud. I could uh, send it up to the personal cloud and get on the uh, iPhone and bring it down. I could do it that way. Another way of doing it on the iPhone, very slick, is if you've got a, an Outlook account, you can email the OVPN to your email account at Outlook and then get on your mail app on the iPhone, which is connected to your Outlook account by default. You can set up different ones. Uh, but uh, by default, it's a an Outlook account. And then once you have that, you can uh, go up on the app in the uh, App Store for iPhone, and then you can download the OpenVPN app, set that up, very easy to do, and then go back onto your email, go onto the attachment where you uploaded the uh, OVPN for Node 1, for instance, to your Outlook account. Click on it, and it's going to say, How do you want to open it? Just slide over the thing and slide to your OpenVPN app. Click on that and it'll come up and say there is one file to import. Click Add to import. It'll say it's imported successfully. And then when you do that, uh, it'll ask you for a password. You put the password in and then it's imported into your OpenVPN app. And then you can go ahead and run it from that. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did that for Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this now. Um, and what I did was I've got the OpenVPN app installed here in Windows 10. I don't know if I have a shortcut. Yeah, there it is, out on the desktop. And you don't have to open that to get in here. And I've already imported that, okay? So what I did was uh, if you go here to the uh, system tray area, if you click the up arrow, there's the icon for OpenVPN GUI, all right? in Windows 10 Pro version 1903. All I need to do is right click on it, select the Win 10 Pro account that I created, the same way I created the Node 1 account, and go over and select Connect. Now it comes up and asks me for a password, so I put the password in, hit OK, and if it's the correct password it'll connect me, and when the window closes I'm connected. It's very fast. All right, and so to confirm that I'm connected, you don't see it here. And the reason you don't see it here with a little padlock is because OpenVPN GUI runs separate from this area down here. What you have to do is open up this area, and you can see it's green. It was uh, blank and behind. Uh, but if you pass your pointer over it, you can see where it says OpenVPN GUI connected to Win 10 Pro connected since 5-31-2019 at 3-31 p.m., which is uh, what it is right now. And then you can see that there's an IP address that's been assigned, and that's 10.8.0.3, okay? So I am connected to VPN right now. And uh, I have used this to get on various sites that, uh, you know, I'm, I don't feel very comfortable getting on without a VPN so that they can look at my traffic or track me or whatever. Uh, and it's working just great. And uh, I've got Komodo Internet Security Premium 12. It doesn't interfere with that at all. Um, Komodo's happy with it. So this is a, an easy thing to implement, an easy thing to put forward here in either Windows or Mac. I don't have a Mac, but you can do it. Um, or Linux. I've got it on the Arch Linux laptop and uh, Apple devices. I've got it both on the iPhone and my iPad with their own accounts, and it works great. Okay, so this has been the video of showing you how to uh, take your Raspberry Pi and create a Pi VPN server. Uh, go ahead and comment down in the comments below. Uh, click on the uh, like button. And um, also, uh, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to me. Hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner, and I'll notify you every time I create a video. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.